how can you say it? I mean, everything is commercial to an extent, you know. Um, anything where, where you have an, a creative artistic thing where people do what they want to do, which maybe is not very good, or maybe it's hilarious, maybe it's stupid, whatever it is, but the people who do that feel good about it, that, so that doesn't mean you're going to get a big audience for that, you know. The experiments of the early 70s had developed a healthy musical environment, but the gigs were still few and far between. And the audiences? Well, even our suits were becoming a rare breed. But in 1973, two almost simultaneous events were to have immediate and far-reaching consequences. A new venue called The Basement opened at Circular Quay in Sydney, and a jazz course was instituted at the Conservatorium of New South Wales. But looking back over a dozen or so remarkable years, I remember clubs like the speakeasies that were empty one night and full the next. Clubs that looked like the final temple of the abiding flame that closed two weeks later. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, what about that band? How to keep the flame alive through what all band? that? You had to learn to live in the present. Promise, just like you told me. Oh, man, scintillating, exciting, great stuff. I don't even call this music, darling. It's jazz, jazz, you like it? Jazz, it's thunder, thunder. You got something going on there, guys, I gotta tell you. We'll get a crowd in here. I think the basement in the first six years, and maybe even still today, I don't know, but that had more creative Australian music playing there than other, any other place ever at that time to that particular time. Also on a regular base. I mean, you know, the duck actually made it happen because they made it financially a sound. Well, Horst, Horst Leopold was, had become a friend of mine and he was a very uh, important person in the development of jazz in Australia. And anyway, as you probably know, but he became the Galapagos Ducks manager and it was from making a recording with them that he was then able to uh, make recordings with other bands, but the duck had introduced enough people to the music at any rate to make it commercially possible to get the other bands to come and play because it was soon going to die if all we had happening was one band. Horst was responsible for putting together the programs uh, that, that, that made it interesting and certainly helped spread the reputation of the basement in an artistic sense. Uh, you know, the, at the time I did a couple things at the basement with uh, the co-op, which was Howie Smith. With Brian Brown had a new band, which came over from Melbourne. And there were another couple of bands, but nobody really had such a great audience, you know? The co-op was really non-commercial at all. So was Brian Barnes. And they had elements, old elements, and a lot of new elements in it, and particularly new for Australia. So once, one night I was putting the two on. The two bands. So somebody along the line, GTK, filmed it, you know. We got some money from the BBC, you know, from the ABC to do it. We did a concert at the Conservatorium. So it all came together that Brian could come up from Melbourne. So we did it, and it was a knockout. People went bananas. Eight o'clock, the joint was sold out. I mean, sold out. I mean, we closed the door, and the two bands hit it. Bad, you know, it was fantastic. <laughs> Soon after he took up his post at the conservatorium, American saxophone virtuoso Howie Smith joined the Jazz Co-op, an adventurous band led by Roger Frampton and Phil Trelaw. His enthusiasm for the music left a strong impression on the local scene. One of the reasons I'm involved in working with 
people is that people took the time to work with me, whether it was in a situation of a club or meeting somebody and talking over things. Um, and things were passed on to me that made my life as a musician easier. And I feel a certain obligation to pass on to other people. I mean, that's, that's part of the process. Jazz is a, a living, evolving music, and it's an oral tradition. I mean, you, the next generation learns by listening to it.